Welcome back to Watch It Played. I'm George Washington. I've got a new plan for how to prevent errors in our game. I'm going to pump these videos out so quickly you can't find them. <laughs> sure, I'm sleep deprived and can't remember my own name, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. Okay, let's get on with this. Thorin Gill recommended committing the dwarves and the spearmen to the quest, but the spearmen only has a willpower strength of zero, so he won't be able to really help during the questing phase. But I do agree, let's commit these dwarves. We'll do that by exhausting them. And now we add a card from the encounter deck to our staging area. Okay, we've drawn the Enchanted Stream. It's a location card. It doesn't have any when revealed effects, but it does have a threat strength of two. So now we can go ahead and resolve the questing phase. So with a combined willpower strength of three from our dwarves, going up against the staging area threat strength of two, the difference of one is how many progress tokens we can place in our quest deck. We've now placed two progress tokens. Only six more to go. Now that it's the travel phase, I'm going to choose to travel to this location so that we can remove its threat strength from the staging area. So this location requires two progress tokens in order to remove it from play. And it also has an effect. It says, while Enchanted Stream is the active location, players cannot draw cards. So during our next resource phase, we won't be able to add another card to our hand. And that kind of stinks. Now it's the encounter phase, but we have no enemies in the staging area. So we can't engage an enemy and, well, there's none here to engage us. This is going to make our combat phase very simple, because there's, <laughs> there's no combat to conduct. What this means for us, basically, is that Legolas is sort of wasting an action here. If we had committed him to the quest, then we would have been able to add at least one more progress token to our Flies and Spiders quest deck. But we didn't know whether or not we were going to be drawing another uh, enemy as an encounter card. So it was the conservative thing to do. It maybe didn't benefit us this turn. Well, now it's the refresh phase, so we'll just ready our exhausted characters and add one to our current threat level. So now it's the next turn. We're gonna start with our resource phase. I get to add one resource token to each of our resource pools of our heroes. And the effect of that pesky enchanted stream is preventing us from being able to draw a new card this turn. In the last video, I talked about the benefits of placing the armor on Gimli. But Cartoons 80s, 90s is interested in placing it on Thalen. He recognizes that Thalen, if he takes one more damage, is gonna die. And that means we'll lose his willpower strength We'll be drawing one less resource token per turn, and of course we'll lose his card text ability. That really is the more conservative move, and while there's a part of me that wants to pump Gimli up to Hulk levels of strength, I'm thinking what I will do is spend the four resource tokens and put that armor on Thalen. So remember, the benefit of the armor is it provides the attached hero with an additional four hit points. That means Thalen now has a total of eight hit points, so with the three damage tokens, he can sustain four more damage before he's killed. Now for this questing phase, I want to do something a little different, perhaps a little risky. I want to commit all three of our heroes to the quest. Now what this will do is it'll allow us to use the extra willpower strength that Legolas will be contributing. But if we draw an enemy from the encounter deck and add to the staging area, that means we're going to have one less character with which to defend or attack. But I'm really hoping to get those extra progress tokens on, so I'm going to risk it. So we're going to exhaust our three heroes. That commits them to the quest. And now, fingers crossed, add an encounter card to the staging area. Yes! It's a location. So this is the forced gate. It's a location card with a threat strength of two, and it has no when revealed effects that we have to worry about. So now we can just resolve our quest. So now our combined willpower strength of four is going up against the threat strength of two, and the difference is two, so that means we can place two progress tokens on the Enchanted Stream. And since the Enchanted Stream only requires two progress tokens in order to be resolved, we can now remove it from play. So we'll place it here into the discard pile. Now I gotta say, and I'm probably jinxing myself by saying this out loud, but our tactics deck, which is primarily good at fighting, is actually doing a really good job during the questing phase. Hopefully we can keep that up. But now it's the travel phase, and I am going to travel to this location, bring it down here, take it out of the staging area. The forest gate has a response when you travel to it, and it's actually pretty decent. After you travel to the forest gate, the first player may draw two cards. Now the only drawback is it requires four quest tokens in order to remove this location from play. But let's focus on the good stuff now, guys. Glass half full, of course. We're drawing two new cards. And so we've drawn a new ally card and an event card. Now, the veteran Axe Hand doesn't have any special abilities, but he's got a couple of hit points and he can attack pretty decent. 
But thinking of spears, now this is the interesting card. Look what it says here. You must use resources from three different heroes pools to pay for a card. Now, we already know you can combine your heroes resource pools to pay for cards if they have matching spheres of influence. But this says you must use resources from three different heroes pools. So that means this card is really designed only for a single sphere deck. Because if you had three heroes and say only two of them were from the tactics deck, and one was from a different sphere of influence, you would not be able to use resources from three different heroes pools because one of them wouldn't match the sphere of influence on this card. So with that cleared up, let's look at the action on the card. It says, choose a player. That player's engaged enemies do not attack this phase. Now that effect is interesting because say we had a situation like this again where we had committed all of our heroes to questing but there was a bunch of engaged enemies that were going to attack us. By using the thicket of spears we could prevent them from being able to attack us that turn when our defenses are low. But let's move on to the encounter phase. Now we have no enemies in the staging area so basically our encounter phase is over. So we can move right on to the combat phase. Hey you hear that? Regular viewers will recognize that as they watch it play at Helpline. I wonder who that could be. Oh hey Math Math Man how you doing? What's that? Another correction? No, I highly doubt that. I've been being very careful. Oh. Yeah, no, no, I knew about that. No, I did. I was going to show them later. Yes, it would have been easy to show them sooner. Your name would be easy if it wasn't a tongue twister. <sighs> so, as I was going to point out anyway, when you exhaust heroes, you don't have to exhaust their attachment cards at the same time. They actually exhaust independently. Now that hasn't affected us during this game, but Math Math Man is right. So okay, thanks for calling that in, Math Math Man. Because some attachment cards will have their own separate exhaust effects. So you don't want to be exhausting both because you might be able to both exhaust your hero and then exhaust your attachment to use its effect. And once again, your feedback on this series just helps make it even better. So thanks a lot, guys. I really mean it. Okay, so we can move on to the combat phase, and there's no one here to fight, so the combat phase is over. Well, now it's the refresh phase, so we'll just ready our exhausted cards, like so. And don't forget, we also have to raise our threat level by one. Now we can move on to the resource phase and add one resource token to each of our hero's resource pool. And because we got rid of the enchanted stream, we are no longer restricted from drawing cards during our resource phase, so I'll do that now. And look at this, just what I always wanted, another veteran axe hand. Okay, so I've organized my hand here a little bit, just organizing them by allies and events. I got a request from Hamster who wanted me to bring out Gandalf during this turn. I think that's a great idea, let's do that. So I'm going to spend five resource tokens. Now we get some options when we bring out Gandalf, so let's take a look. After Gandalf enters play, choose one. Either draw three cards, deal four damage to one enemy in play, or reduce your threat by five. Now Hamsterbake wanted me to draw three cards, but he didn't realize at the time when he posted that that I would be traveling to a location that would allow me to draw two additional cards anyway. So I really feel like the better priority would be to reduce our threat. So our threat level now is at 30. And we're all at a resource token, so that definitely ends our planning phase. And we can move on to the questing phase. And for the questing phase, I'm going to commit Gimli, Thalen, and Gandalf. I want to leave Lagolas and the Gondorian Spearmen available to attack or defend because we've been drawing a lot of location cards and an enemy card has got to be around the corner here. So let's reveal a card from the encounter deck. Oh no, it's the King Spider. Okay, let's take a closer look at this card. Okay, so the King Spider is an enemy. He's got two threat strength and look at that nasty attack strength of three. He has a shadow effect icon, but remember you ignore everything under the shadow effect icon. That comes up only during combat. He also has when revealed effects, each player must choose and exhaust one character he controls. So one good thing right off the top, because of Thalen's card ability, when he's committed to a quest, he deals one damage to any enemy revealed from the encounter deck. Now normally I should be resolving this when revealed card effect right now, in other words I should be exhausting one of these characters. But since it isn't going to affect gameplay, I want to wait and resolve the quest first because I'm going to need your help choosing which of these characters to exhaust. So right now we have a combined willpower strength of 7, which is fantastic. The threat strength in the staging area is 2, which means we get to place 5 progress tokens on our active quest. So we have our 5 progress tokens that we can place on our active location, but the active location only requires 4. So we're going to place those 4 on the forest gate, and we have 1 extra. And that 1 extra we can place in our quest deck. So that turned out really well. We get to remove these progress tokens, 
and put the forest gate into our discard pile. Now I want to point out an important rule. When we had more progress tokens than were required for the active location, we were able to put the extras on the quest deck. But if we ever had more progress tokens than were required to place on the quest deck, then the extra progress tokens would be lost. We wouldn't be able to remove the top card from the quest deck and then place the extra tokens on the next quest card. Okay, so we still have this when revealed effect and we have to exhaust one of our remaining characters. And that's why I didn't resolve it right away. I need your help. I don't know what to do. I don't have any resource tokens, so I can't play Quick Strike once this monster engages us and before it attacks us. So he will be attacking us during the combat phase, and his attack strength right now is 3. We're going to have to add an encounter card to that. Who knows what that will be, so it might boost it even more. So if we exhaust the Gondorian Spearman now, that means Legolas is going to be left, and if we choose to use him to defend, he's going to take at least 2 damage tokens. If we leave the attack undefended, then his full 3 attack strength is going to be converted into damage that we must assign to one of our heroes. 3 attack strength would kill Gimli, would almost kill Legolas, and would almost kill Thalen. On the other hand, if we exhaust Legolas now and block with our Gondorian Spearman, he will add one more damage token to the spider because of his effect. That won't kill the spider, but then the spider will attack with a 3, at least, attack strength, blocked by 1 defense, and that will certainly kill our Gondorian Spearman. If we leave the attack undefended, again, we'll have to place at least three damage tokens somewhere on one of our heroes, and then he won't be able to attack back and make any real difference. So please, write in. Tell me what to do, because I have no idea. And thanks again for all your help so far. I hope you guys have been enjoying the series. We'll see you very soon.